Neighbor. We have some lads in this prison. They are their crimes are so horrific um, that they may never get out. I've done ten months in prison now, and I've still got twenty-seven years and two months left. Not a lot shocks me anymore. You say no, they have a hissy fit. You say no, they'll turn around and say, "I want to smash your face in." I'm telling you, bro. When I see you. I'm gonna slash your throat, you mo- Oh, man! Oh. You got my leg? If you put a dog in a cage, it's not gonna get better, do you know what I mean? You can't just leave someone in a room expecting to change overnight or over 10 years. It's not gonna happen. You have to teach them. That's why it's called rehabilitation. Welcome to hell. The authorities at Aylesbury Prison have to try to manage some of the most dangerous and disruptive 18 to 21 year olds in the country. One minute you might be with a shield going into a cell to take a weapon off somebody. The next minute you might be breaking news to somebody that somebody nearest and dearest has got something awful happen to them uh, and everything in between. The prison officers, we come in here and we're trapped in this little world that all morals and principles are completely different. For example, the big boys in this jail, the ones that have committed serious, horrible offences, who have been violent in jail, have a lot of respect of the rest of the prison population. When they get their reputation, they then disrupt the prison service, disrupt the daily running of the prison. A lot of them are violent, and just bringing them in, into prison doesn't switch that off. That's just a way that they've been brought up or where they would choose to adopt when they interact with people. So yeah, it can be a in very intimidating environment at times. We've had a number of staff assaulted in the last couple of weeks. Let's go backwards, eh? Let's go backwards. The prisoner has assaulted an officer okay. after refusing to follow orders. The attacker is taken straight to the segregation block. Who's doing the search? Who's doing the search? If you don't follow the staff and listen to the staff, I will instruct them to restrain you under restraint and we'll take clothes off for you. The prisoner refuses to give up his clothes, which may contain DNA evidence from the assault. People don't always do what we want them to do. They've always been the big man in the gang or whatever. And we've got to actually say, no, within this prison, it's a mini society. Shut your mouth, man. Shut your mouth. Like I said, with the actions you're displaying, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to Yes, sir. We're not living in a utopia where we think we'll be able to cure everything, but it's just small steps to just try and get people to interact with people in an appropriate way that it isn't appropriate to either assault them or verbally abuse them. When a member of staff is assaulted, particularly if it's a bad assault, you almost take it personally because even though we work in a different department, we all work as a team and your instinct in that situation is to go to that person that is bleeding all over the place. And if that's the member of staff, your instinct is to go to that person. Actually, we're here for the prisoner. So if the prisoner is restrained, it does put you in a bit of an awkward position. And sometimes it is difficult to say, actually, you know, you need to call an ambulance for that member of staff because I need to be here with that prisoner. That almost sits wrong with you as a nurse. Officers are permitted to use reasonable force to defend themselves when attacked. In 2012, 35 members of staff were assaulted at Aylesbury. 16 needed hospital treatment. I've had fights with officers loads of times in Chelmsford, Bedford, Woodhill. I'm banned from all them jails and they sent me here. I had a bit of trouble here when I first come here. Fucked up. I was doing, I was, I was doing all right. I, just, I was boxing and that on the out, innit? And I was doing all right. Eh? And then I fucked up by coming in here. I've lost my license now. I'll never, never be allowed to box again. Never. So I don't even know, I don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna do when I get out. Some of the staff assaults we've had in the establishment are horrendous. And you watch, watch them back and you, you got to say, some of them are really lucky to keep their lives. A female officer has been attacked. Are you all right? Yeah, I don't know. And that's been the real change for me, the propensity for prisoners to 
to assault female staff because it used to be very much the taboo and you'd expect a prisoner backlash from their peers if they assaulted a female member of staff. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake half the stuff. My legs, my legs are the first one to go. And then we'll get... well, I'm going to give you the opportunity to walk to the segregation unit. Any messing around, the staff will be instructed to really restrain you, and then you've blown your opportunity, yeah? Agreed? Yep. Staff in other countries, they carry guns, they carry tasers. We carry nothing. While they're content and while they're happy, they're not kicking my head in. And that's what I don't think the public actually realise. They, they know about prisoners have got televisions, prisoners have got playstations, prisoners have got um, trainers, all the things. But what they don't see is while they've got their privileges, they're not kicking the start of it. And that's the only from, from our point of view. And we give them a telly, but we can easily take them off. We deal with young men who are not very good at communicating, can't articulate their emotions. Yeah, they can be abusive. We know that. And that's not acceptable. We know that's not acceptable. And I may go and do a seg round, and then someone opens the door and they'll say something about your mother and about your kids and threaten to want to kill you. But on Tuesday, if I go back to that cell and almost bear gr grudges about the fact that, oh, he showered at me and he was, he was aggressive, then actually, how are we actually going to have a word with them? It's not just aggression toward themselves that officers have to deal with. This prisoner is trying to hang himself. Stop, stop, stop. Once the noose is cut, officers have to restrain Ryan Buckley to prevent him from continuing to self-harm. One of the biggest things of being a prison officer nowadays, obviously, is to do with care. You know, myself and my colleagues have inputted a lot of time and effort into this kid, to be honest with you. But at the minute, there's no talking to him. He's he's just unresponsive. Definitely showing bizarre tendencies. I just want to have a look at your neck, Ryan. It's all right. You're not going to get on out of chat or anything? Right. Yeah, then I see very quickly. I'm all right. Sure? Yeah. I just want to have a look, Ryan, and then I'll Calm down, and then I'll chat with you. You got any injuries? We're playing a very dangerous game. He can be bloody-minded, Ryan, and I think he could he could be an accident waiting to happen. You know, all right, it was the self-strangulation that he ended up getting restrained, but I think in the mindset that he's got, I don't think he cares, really. My biggest fear is, obviously, Ryan is out in less than 12 months. It's just a case of looking after him, and hopefully he comes out of this distressful period. There's an officer staring at him 24 hours a day, which I personally wouldn't want anyway. Those considered suicide risks are carefully monitored. When he was down there crying, you know, the mother instinct kicks in, and he looks like all he needs a really big hug, and for somebody to tell him it's all right, you do just want to do it. And he is somebody's son. You want to talk to him then, Ryan? After his failed suicide attempt, Officers are keen to prevent Ryan Buckley trying again. He's got quite a hefty ligature mark around his neck and a small abrasion at the back. Um, he has got cuts on his arms as well that I think were opened up again when he was restrained, but without his consent to do anything, there's not really a huge amount that I can do. If he changes his mind later, I'll come back. But he's just 
not in the right frame of mind at the moment, I think, to be seen. Ryan? Ryan, you really need to try and calm down. You obviously support him and you obviously intervene if he, you know, if he's putting things around his throat, but he's hell-bent on killing himself. He, he, he seems to enjoy cutting himself. Um, you know, like I said, the staff have been in several times already this morning. We've had lots of different items that he's used, tops of lighters, bits of pen. He had several razor blades uh, on the weekend. He was searched and he still provided a razor blade later on. Um, Ryan will find anything to, to cut himself with. Ryan has moved out of his cell, so it can be searched for any items he may use to self-harm. I'm just uh, I'm replacing the bedding with antiligature because it doesn't tear. So he's leaving his own clothes for that. He can't um, try hanging himself with it. Everything, absolutely everything out of his cell. With that piece of lighter there, he's taken the metal bit off the top. And what he does with that then is he snaps it, so it's got a sharp corner. I've got his other And then he drives it into his arms. And taking the soap out because he's trying to eat it. If you unravel that most of the time, so you can hide bits of razor blades, stuff like that, and this will take it out completely. So you always give him a new one so he can eat. Yeah, that's a new one, yeah. Um, we've taken his bedding out, taken the laces out of his trains because we haven't got slippers. So at the moment, he's got nothing. You know, when you're dealing with a lad who's in crisis, you, you're constantly watching out for the potential of suicide. And, you know, there's nothing worse, there's nothing worse than going home at five o'clock in the evening and saying good luck to everybody and, you know, laughing and smiling about a good day and coming in the next day or getting a phone call in the middle of the night saying, you know, young Johnny's hung himself to just cut him down, you know? It is... It's horrendous, and it's the worst thing that, that any of us have to go through, isn't it? You know? You never know when anything's going to happen. And you do see some things that are quite horrific. I've probably cut down about 20 prisoners that have hung themselves. Um, one of those was dead. But as long as, you know, you, you, it's, you, you, learn, you learn to deal with it. You learn to... Um, you learn to deal with it when it happens and then forget it very shortly afterwards. Because if you if you if it played on your mind, you wouldn't kind of work. It would send you mad. An alarm is triggered on Sea Wing. Emerali Oxy has pushed aside an officer and attacked a maintenance worker. <laughs> He needs to calm down. If he continues the way he's in prison, he will never get out of prison. I've been in situations where I know him really well, and I find if anyone could de-escalate him, then it could be possibly me. Because he's a likeable person. He just has this other side of him. Jekyll and Hyde, if you like. The red mist just comes up. His eyes are bulging. You can see the rage in him. He just can't control himself. But he's a very strong young man, very fit. In the heat of the moment, I think he could lash out at anybody. And it don't matter who you are, I think if, even if his parents walked in, I don't think they'd even calm him down when he's in that rage. Mental health worker Liz Magnus checks on Oxy's condition. Oxy, you want to talk? up at the moment because there's no staff and there's someone out on the phone. So, we're back to seeing you properly Monday, yeah, not Monday, wrong day, Friday. You're going to keep your phone? No right person in their head will push two officers out of the way and go and to go assault someone, isn't it? If they haven't done anything, unless you're not all there in your head, isn't it? Obviously, he's done something to me, yeah? He's come to my door trying to wind me up. I told him he called me a pussy, works called me a pussy and all that. And he was like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? Come on, let's all come to reality now. It does matter, yeah? Because he's not supposed to be doing that, isn't he? He's not supposed to be doing that. He really is not supposed to be doing that. What we have actually have from Oxy is our noted escalation in behaviour. Although there have been a number of 
aggressive incidents since he's been here and he's spent a fair amount of time down at the SEG unit. Up to now he has damaged property. This is the first time he's made a direct assault on a member of staff, which although he has done in the past in other establishments, it's an, it, it is new for Aylesbury in the time that we've had him in Aylesbury. Um, he acknowledges that when I spoke to him about it just now and he is, all he's saying about it is he wants it to get him a transfer to another prison. Young Oxy wants out of the establishment. The problem is he has a little bit of stability and then he has um, moments where he then gets disruptive and assaulting individuals, whether that's staff or prisoners. He's assaulted a member of the works team. So again, now while we're communicating to other jails, we've got to add that on to his record that he's gone on assault on another member of staff, so it's going to be difficult to move on. As it currently stands, eight establishments have been ranked, and this morning, prison number nine has said no, which was felt. Are you trying to say that nine people want to? Nobody, nobody wants you. That's been really tr truthful because what they're saying is, why do I want a young man who potentially is a bit of a nightmare? There's something kick ticking in your little head somewhere that makes you just lose it. Mm. And what you need to do is find out what that is and do something about it, innit? Yeah. All right, mate. Nice one. Yeah. See you later. Oxy, you've got about a minute left and I'll throw you in the shower. Yesterday, I was just going to walk right into it, But I feel even more angry you now, because shit my nose, yeah? Fucked up my face. Just, it just makes me feel like, why shouldn't I do that to them, you know what I mean? So done. So I think, I'll just carry on doing it. I'll just keep doing it, you know? I'm not making it easy for them, innit? Simple. It's visiting time at Aylesbury. That's the only thing I look forward to, really, is a visit. There's nothing else really to look forward to in there, is it? I mean, banged up basically for 15 hours a day. Lewis Bibby's girlfriend, Jess, visits him once a week. Do you remember why I brought her on? Yeah. <laughs> you can't really do much in a visit, you know what I mean? Kisses and cuddles are enough for me, you know what I mean? Enough for me, for her just coming to see me, that's what I like, I'm happy, you know what I mean, so that's good. As soon as we get out, then, then we can take it to the bedroom, you know what I mean? I've got nine months left. Lewis Bibby. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, I'm back. Thank you. Bibby got to know Jess after writing to her as a pen pal. How are you? I'm good. Good. Yeah, I'm good. Sure? Yeah. Good. That's what you're about. Huh? Looks like I can't kiss you today. Oh, <laughs> Stop being horrible. You've been, no, good. been good. Don't take the piss. <laughs> so I've met this girl and I actually care about someone for like the first time in my life. We ended up getting together about two months ago. I asked her to marry me in like the first couple of weeks. But she said, yeah. When she said that, I thought it was the first time anyone's actually believed me, you know what I mean? Been behaving yourself then. Being a good boy. Huh? Being a yeah. good boy. Been good, you're yeah. having because you're not looking at me, and that's when I know you're lying. <laughs> no, it's because you're making me laugh. Me. Before I met this girl, you know, all I used to think about was crime and that, you know what I mean? I had a mad old life, you know what I mean, since the age of eight and that. I was like 12 when I got an Asbo. First of all, when I got nicked, I think I got nicked for about 14 burglaries, you know, my whole life, you know what I mean? I've done about 600, 700 burglaries, you know what I mean? And you know, now I've got a. Uh, I'm 100% out of wheel change, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to let her down. Like, that's what love is, isn't it? I mean, got a lot of stuff to look forward to. Finished college, proud of me. Yeah, I'm proud well of done, you. Jess. So you gotta get a job easy now, <laughs> isn't it? No. Hey, you would. Get a job easy. Got to get her a ring now. Get a job in that when I get out. Give her kids in that. Have a little bibby running around in the bar. See you Wednesday, yeah? Mm-hmm. All Thursday. <laughs> Which one? Uh, Wednesday, if you can, but if not, the first. Okay, I'm going. I'll speak to you later. Love you more. Bye. Bye. Is it enough? No. Never is, is it? <laughs> Once a week, it's not enough.
It's just when I kiss her and I get this mad old rushy feeling down my body, you know what I mean? And then when she has to go, you know what I mean? Like, I, feel, I feel like crying all the time, you know what I mean? Obviously, I, I, cry, I cry myself all the time, you know? I'm like a little baby, you know what I mean? But like, see, you, you see some people say, like, when you cry and that, you're meant to feel better after, but I don't, you know what I mean? I still feel like shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? But... It's not a good thing to say, oh yeah, my boyfriend's in prison, but... Can't help you for who you like, can you? I suppose. I don't think that I'm that naughty, really. I don't. I, I just do the little things, you know what I mean? Like, I think, I think naughty is where someone fucking goes out and stabs someone and things like that. I, I, I think that's naughty, but like robbing cars and that, I don't know. That's, that's, that's petty, really, you know what I mean? It's not as bad as what other people do, so. I don't do good boys, ever. <laughs> I had a good boy. And then just, they're too good. You have to have a bit of bad in them, always. They haven't been together that long, and it seems that all his focus is on this this one young person, and she is his life. You know, he's already said how he plans to marry her when he gets out. We've got to be mindful that she's a young girl. Things happen. She's outside. She's got the opportunity to meet other people. You know, it has been known relationships break down in no matter what shape or form, wherever you are. So for us, if that happens, then we've got you know, a massive crisis on our hands, considering he's showing the type of behaviour he's already showing uh, to do with Jess. If I didn't have her, then I wouldn't see no point in living. But obviously, like, now I've got, uh, I've got things to look forward to, you know what I mean? My dad hates it. My mum says she'll give him the chance when he gets out. My dad ain't too keen on it. He don't know him, though, does he? So maybe if he gets to know him, he might be all right, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I'll either see him on Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> I think some of my mates on the wing get a bit fed up with me, you know what I mean? Because that's, that's all I'm talking about. I don't really talk about anything else. All yeah. I do is talk about her. You've got to believe that people can change, because that's the end result. That we are all in this business to protect society whilst people have got custodial sentences and look after them. But we've got to do something with them. We expect them to work. We expect them to better themselves. We expect them to take responsibility for their actions as best as we can and get them into a situation where, at the end of their custodial sentence, they can actually get out there and get some employment, training or education, and there's a high chance that the person won't be coming back. Prisoners can train as chefs here. The food in here is beautiful. Spanish on the yeah? Don't give it too much. Always are very good, very polite, serve you well. They become uh, far more mature than when they are on the wing. Hey, Buckley, did you apply for the mission? Although Buckley has a history of self-harming with sharp objects, he's given a chance to work in the kitchen. Yeah, I feel a lot happier now. I've got the decision what job I'm in now. So i going to start from the bottom and work it out, really. Which I don't mind, it keeps me busy. There are things in here that self-harmers could put around their body so they can take it back to their cells if they want to. So clearly I have to keep an eye on him and keep a close management control of him so that he's not given the opportunity to take that stuff. But if you treat him in the right way, he should be able to respond to that. The target and the incentive for him is to do the right thing. So he's therefore then, when I look at it in two or three weeks' time, met all the criteria I wanted and then he can then get the best job in the, in the, the staff mess, which is in the wash-up. So you just clean it off from the sky and I'll get you all that now if you want to. Yeah, I'll So right in prison, when you've got all these people around to help you, all these courses you can do, all these cooking degrees, it's when you get outside them gates with your bags and you're, you're basically thrown back into the community. There's not a lot of people there to help you. And I don't want to go to the hostel. hostel. The simple fact is that you've got drug users in a hostel, then I've got more chance of offending. Even if I've got a, a full-time job as a chef, I've still got people smoking drugs in front of me, and I'm going to be back in prison. I can say no, but when you're around that constantly, it's like in prison, if you're constantly around the wrong peers, you're going to get in trouble, fights, segregation unit, verbal warnings. Like all these boys, you get them down here, give them a bit more responsibility, and they do seem to develop a little bit. And maybe that's good for him, I don't know. But he seems to be all right, he's doing the work. You know, we've got a number of different tasks for him to carry out, and I think he's working all right at it, so that's good. Prisoners provide the labour for most prison services, including the laundry. 
finally got a job. I've been unemployed for about two months now. You know what I mean? So I've just been riding stiff bang up for like two months. Now I'm out myself, you know what I mean? Like days are going a lot quicker. I've got just under a year left. All I can do now is just keep my head down, think about what I'm going to do when I get out. When I was out, I'd break into houses and that's all I actually done, you know what I mean? Obviously, like, I've never been to college, you know what I mean? So I've never actually done anything, you know what I mean? What kind of positive can rise from a tragedy? If this is what a negative can do, feels like my neck is in a noose from my ties to her majesty. Trying to stay alive with no strategy. Just trying to survive for my sanity. Heard bashing stunts your growth, but the lack of pussies already deprived my anatomy. Prisoners with musical ability are given the opportunity to express themselves. I've been rapping before I even come jail, but I never quite took it serious. It was just like something I could do, I could throw two lines together and make them sound good, but that was it. I never really took it serious. I don't know whether it was the predicament I was in that changed my whole mindset, but my rapping changed with it. And that since then, this is something I take very serious. Without this, I don't know what I'll do in jail. If I never like, had that escape, this is, this is how I escape it. Tuck the shackle down, I'll work the cuffs. I'm just trying to make it home before the feathers on my bird gets plucked. I'm Life for Kenny Cornwall often takes out his frustrations on prison property. He had a disagreement over the way that shot was played. And then he just lost it, lost it at the end. He just went nuts, said, well, if I can't play pool, nobody's playing pool, and ripped the cloths. The rest of the lads won't be best please. There'll be nothing for them to do. It's a mess. Both tables, both tables ruined. So we're limited for association equipment now. We all had two tables for the biggest wing in the prison, so we've got none now. What's happened today? Is that your break of huh? This guy is a nerd. He's scared for his life, so he ripped the table to go to the block. Dickhead, man. He's going to go to the block. Yeah. I don't think the other prisoners would be too pleased with what he's done, so he's not particularly safe on the wing and just can't let him out, so I'll move him to the SEG unit anyway, and he wants to go. <laughs> What we've got here is two pool cues, both of them smashed. We've seen how volatile some of the young men are here and the way they can turn in an instant. So that's why you've always got to be your guard, be careful, make sure everything's accounted for to stop staff or other prisoners being injured by weapons like these. I'm just... I'm, I'm this close to just fucking up a prisoner or someone like and every time I try and get out of it, it's like another challenge comes along. Kenny, it's not a pig. It's not just your way of dealing with things, and that's what you need to learn that. There's a lot of people in life piss me off, but don't go around turning pool tables and smashing pool cues. It's that or I just smash somebody's face and that's just going to get me even worse. It's going to get me even worse. Listen, that's not the only alternative, is it? Every time we get to this level, that's another added bit to your sentence. We start all over again. What's up, Oxy? Where are we going on? In about ten minutes. Is that what you're on the sale belt for? Yeah. How are you? Very good. You're taking a piss. I feel like I've got to fucking smash someone's head in the beginning so they know that I'm not a fucking dickhead, innit? You know what I'm saying? Emerali Oxy is back on Sea Wing after a stay in the segregation block for destroying his cell. It's unfortunately, his history is that he ends up smashing up when he doesn't get his own way. We'll try and deal with it. Try to get through to him that is not the way to go. I would like to think we could get through to him. I'm always positive, but. The truth of the matter is, he probably will just smash up, go back down the seg and not break the cycle that he's in, because he doesn't want to be at Aylesbury. He's a, he's a difficult prisoner, and if I'm honest, personally, I don't think his environment helps him, because it's why young offenders and a lot of them are immature. Can I come in 
Oxy? Oxy is upset that he's still being punished with a loss of privileges. And Liz, the mental health worker, is trying to calm him down. When did you come back over? Today. What are you worried about? Put me over here with no telly, loss of soj, no blow, nothing. I want to go back to the block. And this is blocking, so I want to go back to the block. How much longer have you got on losses? Seven days. Seven days? And you can ride seven days, surely. Where is the point in me being on a different unit but with the same circumstances? Where is the point? Having some human contact. With who? With who? Who are these people? Who are they to me? Do you feel I care about anyone near? I came to prison alone and I'm going to walk out alone. I don't want to know anyone here. I don't want to know if I'm calling it. I want to get out of here and that's it. I want a cigarette. Can't I go have a cigarette? Can't I go get a Rizla? Why can't I go get a Rizla? I don't know, I just want to ask his certain officers, let me just go get a Rizla for the innit, so I can calm down and not let me go get a Rizla. What the fuck's all that about? It's like they want, it's because they want me to do something, innit? That's why, because they want me to do something. They're pushing my buttons. Do you genuinely believe that? But I want a Rizla, why is it so hard for me to go get a Rizla? Let me find out. Can we get the skin? I'm, I'm not running around getting Rizla. It's know? like I'm going to have to do something bigger for them to understand that I need to get out of here. We need to finish. Playing a would solve the problem. Why can't we just give him a Rizla? We, we, we can't reward threats. We, 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 we had can't. it all weekend before a cigarette. All weekend, he destroyed the set. Boxy's next move is to squirt washing up liquid under his door. Your history denotes that you're getting to a level where you are becoming unmanageable. So at the moment, we're having to manage you behind your door. And now you're behind your door, you're becoming even more unmanageable by creating a health and safety risk to everybody. He's now getting desperate. He specifically said that he runs this prison, he controls us, um, and he's, seen, he's very quickly learning that's not the case. So now he's doing desperate things. Hey, my Raleigh! What's going on? You should not. What are you done for now? Calling someone a little girl. Calling someone a little girl? Mm. I can't believe you just went, you little girl. He's been told no f about a couple of things today which he doesn't like because he just thinks that he should be back up to where he was on D-Wing straight away. Okay, follow me, then we'll go this way. Oxy is escorted back to the segregation block once again. Hey, Marley, you all right? OK, so, you have problems on the wing? He's now refusing to eat. All machines need fuel, man. Especially highly tuned <laughs> sporting models. Why aren't you eating? I don't know. I don't want to eat. You don't know why you're not eating? I don't want to eat. I don't want to eat. Is it as a protest? I don't want to eat. It's just because you're not hungry? Yeah, it's not want to eat. Every day we'll encourage him to eat. We we'll try and talk with him. It, is, it does seem to be a protest, but... Um, We'll see, really. Um, I know him right. He does like his food. He does lots of exercise, so he needs his food. So hopefully, before three days are up, he'll start eating again. If I don't fucking eat, it's going to work. I'm going to go out of there. Simple. You know what I mean? It's the only way to do it. It isn't really an effective way of protesting. It never is. Never will. The prison still can't see to it, or everyone will just stop eating to get their own way. Come on, let's move down. Come in. You've had a party. Oxy continues to raise the stakes. He's made a mess and blocked his toilet. In three years' time, where can you see yourself? Not out of here. Not out of here. Why not? Now, how do you describe jail? What's the one thing you have in your life that's going for you right now? One thing. The one thing you've got going for you right now is your age. You're young enough to change. You're young enough to get out. You're going to be, what, 22, 23 when you get to? Just so you live to your 70. You've got 47 years of this shit. Or you've got 47 years of that. 
because you decided to come here. But only you will decide if you come back. Oh, my God. No, you love your mum, yeah? Yeah, of course. Next time you see your mum, you ask her, what's the last thing you think about when you go to bed at night? And what's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? And the answer's going to be you. So, how many of your mates or your boys went round to your mum's house and said to your mum, look, Oki's in jail. Will you go for bread? None. So what I would do if I was you, when I get out of jail in three years' time, when you walk down the streets of Arbutia and your mates come up and see you, I'll tell them to fuck off. Some prisons you can rehabilitate. You know that some prisoners won't come back to prison, but the majority, sadly, they do. They do. It's the way, you know, they, they're brought up in um, deprived areas. They've got no education. They've got no job. They get out of prison. And there's no work out. There's no work out on the streets for young kids that have got um, qualifications, let alone a prisoner that comes out of prison that's been in prison three, four years. And what have you done? Nothing. Less than 36 hours after starting to refuse food, Oxy changes his mind. So what happened to the hunger strike? Find it. Two fucking. How long did it last? Um, then off. You're greedy, though, aren't you? <laughs> I eat much more than you on all of Do you know I'm coming out of me saying? I'm coming out insane. <laughs> I come in here, my brain was fine. I was cool. I was a normal person. I'm leaving here fucked up. Ryan Buckley couldn't cope with his job in the kitchen and has become suicidal again. He said, enough is enough, Cher. I need to say goodbye and has asked me to do his funeral. And it's just dreadful. A young man who's not even 21 yet with so much life ahead of him, but he's, he's so scared. He's so scared of coming out of prison and what he's got to face on, on, on the out, as they call it. He says he's, he's thousands of pounds in debt to the, to the drug dealers in Essex. I believe, personally, that he will actually go back on the heroin. I think, personally, come off the methadone too quickly. Um, I asked him directly several months ago, and be fit, and he was quite honest and open. He said that he will go back on the gear. And at the minute, he's actually looking for anything that he can use as a cell phone tool. He got in his, what's right, he got? He's, pretty, he's just picking bits up off the floor. To harm himself yeah. with? Yeah, bits of plastic off of things. It would be the, the corner Poor of the boy. toothpaste tube. It's, it's Poor anything. Poor boy, he's, he's just desperate, Jay. Mm. I mean, this morning he said goodbye to me. He said, I'm not going to see you again. I feel a bit sorry for him, to be honest, because he's, he's done so well, and I think he's built some fantastic bridges with staff. Um, over the last few months and he's got himself into the mess. He's got himself into a position where he seems happy all the time. And if he's happy and he's doing well, well actually, that makes us quite happy and it makes our job that little bit easier. To see him back here, we don't want to see him going down that cycle slope again and having to start again. Despite being watched as a suicide risk, Ryan's managed to find something to cut himself with. So what are we gonna do with you? Ryan, what are you doing with the soap? Oh, what do you say? I know you don't need me here, but I'm not going anywhere, so um, I'm just, I'm sure you probably know this already, but eating the soap, all it's going to do is make you sick. Yeah. What a lot of lads do when they come into jail is the, is the, the rage stop the age they go into jail. So, you, so you say you come into jail at 14, you tend not to socially develop above the age of 14 because you're not in that social outlet, are you? So you tend to live your life, you know, and then after a few years you'll start to grow up. So I don't know how long Ryan's actually been in, but he's, he's obviously at that level when he came in, because he's not grown up. 
to see Ryan in such a state was distressing. He's, he, he's got a massive range of complex issues. Whether I and my team are suitably qualified to manage them complex issues is questionable, but based on what we do as a living and within our experience, we can only do what we think is best at the time. Who did you do it with? Blunt yes. Is it just this hand? Mm. Where else? Sadly, some people do actually find it so intolerable that they do get into a position where they would attempt to take their own life. We know those people very well. We've been pseudo-parents to them. And we've put huge care plans in place to manage them through that. We've got a, a, young, you know, a young prisoner who's on a constant watch at the moment because we feel his risk is too great that we have to have a member of staff watching him all the time. It's all right. Keep pulling it. After being treated for his cuts, Ryan Buckley tries to hang himself yet again. There was spit and snot everywhere. As much as it sounds quite gross, the only way that I could actually remove the ligature was to actually put my fingers into the skin of his neck, and I had to dig my fingers in in order to release a little bit of pressure so I could get the fish knife in. He had lost consciousness. His lips had gone blue. His eyes were bulging, so it really was a serious attempt. Officers revived Ryan and saved his life. And we've just got to do our best to resettle him, give him, try to provide him with everything that we can so that when he gets back in the community, he's not going to be a risk to, to anyone else. He's not going to, you know, create another victim somewhere, but maybe he also won't be a risk to himself, you know. But... We're going to have to wait and see what happens, I suppose. In the segregation block, a prisoner has gone on a dirty protest. You right? What's that? Your bell's on. Huh? What's that? Oh, no, it's broken. It just, it just keeps coming up and on with salt. All right, then. Give us a shout if you want anything. The prisoner has been throwing his feces out of his smashed observation flap. I can't bear this. No, that poo. I need some lavender. Next door to the dirty protester, Emerali Oxy has destroyed his cell once again. This jail's a shit hole. Proper shit hole. You know what I'm saying? Proper shit hole. Don't get me wrong, people like us make it a shit hole, innit? You know what I mean? In a sense, innit, yeah? But if the gods didn't move the way they did, yeah? The reason why I'm doing this, yeah? Because they fucked me up the other day, innit? Like, they literally fucked me up, innit? So I'll just get my own back and I don't give a fuck. Simple. Most of the people who have undertaken dirty protests have not been mentally ill. They did it because it was what was going to cause the most repulsion. And it has been done that to make a very strong statement to the staff of displeasure at something that's been happening. A team in protective clothing is sent in to end the dirty protest and enable the mess to be cleared up. The prisoner is moved into a special cell, which has nothing in it. Oxy chooses to come peacefully. I don't know what they must be thinking to do in it. Like they go, go outside fucking in. Have some sort of issue to be doing shit like that, man. My plan actually had been to see you in the interview room today, but I think that's kind of uh, mucked up. What can I say that's going to dissuade you from doing that? Hmm? I know you want the ship out, but you know there's not a great deal I can do about that. We have discussed it many times, I will represent your views for you. And I suspect people will be quite glad to see the back of you at the moment. But who's going to take you? We've got to instill a lot of things in people before they go out through the door and teach them some life skills and teach them, you know, explore options. With You know, if somebody comes up to you and says, do you want some drugs, how are you going to handle that? Be honest with us. And, and yeah, it's just trying to give them that hope that things can change, that when they get outside, it has changed. And they think, right, let's move on then. Well, I'm just trying to have a good day and today, and it's not going to. 
it's not going to work. I know it ain't, you know, it's just... During his time here, Ryan Buckley has spent 220 days under special observation to ensure his safety. Lewis Bibby is hoping to settle down with his fiancée, Jess, when he's released. <laughs> Emrali Oxy's continuing battle with the authorities has resulted in 576 days being added to his sentence. 